my channel, it's Lainey, and today I will be discussing the case of Jeanette De Palma. Um, I'm actually trying a new style of videos by a YouTuber named Bailey Sarian. She is a great YouTuber. I highly suggest you guys check her out. Um, she is one of those people who makes videos like I could go to her true crime um, playlist, turn it on, and just watch videos like for hours upon hours. She's so great at doing these things absolutely love her and she is what I believe to be the first person who came up with this idea where basically you sit down and you talk about different true crime cases and you do your makeup so it's really interesting um those are two things I absolutely love so uh yeah I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get to it so on the Monday of August 7th 1972 Jeanette De Palma had told her mother that she was going to take a train over to her friend's house, which is something she did quite often, so it didn't really alarm her mom. But some reports say that her and her mother had gotten into a small argument, nothing big, not too serious, about her mother taking Jeanette to work that afternoon. Um, it went something along the lines of Jeanette being like, no mom, I don't need your help. I'm 16 years old, I can make it to work and back in, on my own time. So, her mother had let her go and take the train over to her friend's house and it was only until later that night her friend had called her mother and told her that Jeanette had never came to her house. So this kind of startled her mother a little bit but she thought okay well maybe she just got a little sidetracked and decided to just go on to work instead and it was only until later that night when Jeanette didn't return home at the time she was supposed to from work that her mother really started to worry. So her mother had filed a missing persons report and instantly the town of Springfield Township, New Jersey, which is where she lived, launched an investigation. Now this investigation lasted for six weeks until a dog in a neighborhood had actually brought a seriously decomposed forearm to its owner. Its owner was clearly freaked out, decided to just take its dog back inside the apartment and stayed in, kind of had nothing to do with it. Um, which, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if he just didn't really think that it was real or what, but um, later that day, the, the sort of like residential upkeeper in the apartment complex came upon this body and it freaked her out a lot. She at first thought that it was just like a prank. A lot of the kids in the neighborhood actually played pranks on her because they didn't like her very much because she was the one who had to tell them to follow the rules and stuff like that um so she thought that it was just one of their many pranks at first until she started to look a little bit closer at it and realized that something wasn't right that looked like a real arm so she called the Springfield Township Police Department um and whenever they had came out they had also thought that oh well this is just some sort of prank and as they started looking closer they realized that it was real so they instantly launched an investigation and it didn't take very long before two policemen in the area were investigating around this old abandoned quarry and found Jeanette De Palma's body atop a cliff. Um, now this is where it starts to get a little bit weird because the two police officers who first found her body had two entirely separate stories. One of them claims up and down that the body had been found placed in this weird area with branches and leaves and stuff like that, placed in a coffin shape, um, surrounded by little homemade crosses, and five stones had been placed at her head. She had been laying on her stomach with one arm over her forehead like this and then the other like that. Um, so clearly this guy's like, this is exactly what happened. Well, the other police officer claims that, that that never happened. Her body had been found in a quite usual appearance. Um, so clearly that's a little bit confusing. Who are you supposed to believe? And actually this quarry that her body had been found upon was what people in the community often referred to as the devil's teeth. Um, it was a place where kids had gone to party and stuff like that. There had been like some sort of, you know, ghostly paranormal sort of rumor to it. 
Um, so this kind of freaked people out, especially once they heard how her body was reportedly found. So the first police officer who actually came to retrieve her body because it had been on such a high cliff and it was just impossible for the two policemen to bring her body down. Upon seeing her body, this left him very, very distraught. He claimed that the way her body had been found was oddly peaceful, almost as if she hadn't died but just fell asleep. And sadly, only a year later, this fireman actually committed suicide, which led to what people in the fire department started calling the De Palma curse. Um, after the man had committed suicide, I believe another quit his job to become a janitor. Another left his wife and kids to live outside of his car for a while. So it sort of just really took a bad toll on these people who've actually seen her body. Um, mind you this, like, if her forearm was badly decomposed and it had been six weeks since her murder, like, I couldn't even imagine what her body had looked like at that point in time. So not only was it just scary to see that, it had to have just been something that they hadn't seen every day. They started clearly trying to figure out who had murdered her. Um, there was actually a homeless man in the woods around the area who people in the community called Red. Um, they believed it might have been him, not only because he was around the area, but because right after Jeanette De Palma had went missing, he had fled the woods, like he wasn't living there anymore. Um, but I believe after a little bit further research and investigation into him, they determined that he had nothing to do with Jeanette's murder. My eyeshadow is just not blending out. This looks so bad. Okay, this is a terrible look. Oh. Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, so, after they said that Red wasn't the murderer, this case actually went cold because there was literally no other leads. There was no other way to figure out how she could have died. Um, it was just a really, really confusing case in general. Um, so not very long after her body had been discovered, news articles such as Star Ledger and the New York Daily News started writing articles about Jeanette De Palma's discovery. They started claiming that her murder was a result of a human sacrifice from a coven of witches in this area called, I believe it was the Wachung Re Reserve. I will list it up in the screen because I honestly kind of forgot what it was and I don't think I can pronounce it. <laughs> um, so clearly after getting wind of all of these reports, the people in the community were just really, really shocked. Um, not only had Jeanette De Palma's case really startled the community, it was only 10 months after the John List murders had taken place. And if you guys don't know what the John List murders were, highly suggest you guys research that. And if y'all want, I can make that one of my next videos. Um, but basically this town had really been going through it this past year. Um, the John List murders and there was Jeanette's body and her murder happened. It was just a lot for them to cope with, um, especially being such a small town where nothing had ever really happened before this point. Now, after all of these magazines had come out saying that Jeanette had actually fell victim of human sacrifice, this really started to draw a lot of interest into the case, honestly. Um, I know that this case interested me because of the occult part of it. Um, it's really just interesting to think about because a lot of this case does contradict itself, but it's really interesting to see the possibility that she could have actually been a human sacrifice. Now, around 1990 and the 2000s, Weird NJ Magazine um, actually received a ton of anonymous letters about this Jeanette De Palma case and decided to start researching it. 
Mark Moran had actually decided to really start digging into these beliefs and this case in general, which later actually resulted in him writing the book, The Death on Devil's Teeth. Um, you guys should really, really look into reading it. I haven't, but I think I might. And in this book, Mark explains how he believes that the Springfield Police Department actually covered up her case. They believe that they actually destroyed all of these files or that they're keeping one of the files locked away somewhere without access while the Springfield Township Police Department actually claims that it was just lost in Hurricane Floyd that happened in 1992. So to sort of wrap this case up, I wanted to just discuss who Jeanette was as a person. Um, it is actually super hard for people to determine who she was and what she was like because um, I've read a lot of conflicting things. Some people say that, so some of her friends at school say that she was super nice and friendly. She was way enthusiastic and always tried to help people go back to their faith in God. Um, if they had been having a really bad time, she would tell them, just pray that things will get better and God will help you, basically. While some other people say that she actually wasn't like this at all. Some people say that she was like that kind of bad kid, like she smoked cigarettes, she hung out with all the bad kids, she didn't like talking to people very often, just stuff like that. So it's really hard to determine what she was really like. So honestly, I wanna see what you guys think about this case. I actually hadn't heard of it until I started researching cases like this. And I think it's super interesting and I just hate how confusing it is though. Like it's like everything I just told you guys contradicts itself. Like you don't know if she was a good kid, if she was a bad kid, you don't know how her body was found. We don't know if her and her parents had had a good relationship at the time. It's just really, really hard to determine this case in general. Um, but nonetheless, it, it's just terrible what happened to her. Um, and I'm actually super interested in, in knowing, genuinely. I, I wish that there was a way to figure it out because I feel like the fact that she could have been a victim of a human sacrifice is just unbelievable. But genuinely, this whole case is just super sad and I think one of the biggest things that gets to a lot of people is the fact that you just don't know who killed her. Alright guys, so this is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know it's a little bit short and it's probably a little bit scattered. Um, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this and like just doing this, I've realized how hard it is for me to multitask. So. I'm definitely going to try and get a little bit better. I'm going to definitely start writing like a ton of notes down. So then that way I know exactly what to say, when to say, and in which order. Um, but I hope you guys can bear with me here. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. And um, if you guys want to hear anything about any sort of specific cases, leave it down below and I will definitely research them. Um, I'm trying to do ones that aren't like the Zodiac Killer or like John Benet Ramsey because there's so many videos on these. Or I actually researched this case after I discovered it and not very many people have done it. So I hope it was interesting to you guys and new and something that entertained you guys. Um, so yeah, I would definitely like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Right, bye guys.